been on a podcast before. Yeah. This will be my first time. First podcast. First time for everything, I guess. Yeah. You a little nervous? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, just because, you know, there's people that are going to watch this. I know. It's a little weird at first. Yeah. I was talking in the camera. Does it look a little weird? A little bit. Like, I kind of feel like we're, like, staging something, but. Uh, yeah. I'm used, to, used to getting used to. Yeah. It is, for sure. And uh, so, everybody watching, this is Braden Borders. Hey guys, long time friend. Um, really met in high school and uh, just kind of had a friendship since then. I think it was actually before that. I was actually bringing this up. So do you remember? I don't even remember how old we were, but we used to play flag football against. <laughs> yeah, other. I do remember this. And you guys were always the Stansberry team. Uh huh. Always, you know, be racking up the points. And then I remember, because what year did we start playing football together? Hmm. 2015 so we, we only played in high school right we didn't yeah. play little league at all Mm-mm. so i remember one time like vividly it's kind of weird i remember we were playing flag football and i think it was my dad or your dad that introduced us together yeah and because that was when we were going to go start playing uh freshman ball together yeah and then i remember when i first met you i didn't like you i know <laughs> i get that a lot though because to me i remember you always were just the guy that like was constantly whooping our butt. <laughs> and of course, you kind of like don't like that kind of person because you, know, uh-huh. you just this guy's too dang good. Uh huh. And so I remember when your dad introduced us together. I was like, "Oh, this guy's not so bad," but I still don't know if I like him. And then we started playing ball together, and I was like, "Oh, like this guy's not a bad dude. He's pretty cool." Yeah. So yeah, what were your first thoughts of me? You're like, "Oh, this dude's an asshole." I think like initially, just because I didn't know you enough, uh-huh. I just always heard about you. And then, uh, I mean, like, you know me, like I, I, I get along pretty well with anybody. Uh-huh. And so for me, it was more or less just trying to get to know you. Yeah. And then you and I just like hit it off. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh, you know, this guy's actually like a really good quarterback. Uh huh. Because that's what you played, and you know, I, I played running back and safety, and I mean, sometimes I, I play, you know, like Z or uh, receiver. Mm-hmm. And so you throw me some good balls. Right. And right. Like, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about that, you know, like football, like brings us together. And I think that's just where yeah. you and I just clicked. And then throughout high school, you and I just would hang out. Yeah. So. And it was fun because like anybody out there, I started off at Clark because I lived in Stansbury. Yeah. And uh, freshman year, I went up to Twilix and my dad was coaching up there and I didn't know anybody. I was actually just talking <laughs> to my wife about that. Like yeah. um, Carver I had on last week. Luckily, he's pretty extroverted. And so, like, I got to meet a lot of people that way, and that kind of helped and opened me up because I wasn't very extroverted or making new friends and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, I remember meeting you at the flag field. I was actually, <laughs> like, I think that was Braden, but our dads introduced each other because they knew each other, and uh, I always wore number 11. And uh, I remember that's, that's right. I forgot about this. And <laughs> you always wore number 11, and you're like, oh, nice to meet you. Like, But, like, number 11 is my number for next year and i was like this motherfucker (laughs) (laughs) uh i kind of do remember that what what number did you end up i got 11 you got 11 that year yeah you were i was eight yeah you were eight you were nice to me because i was gone on like a trip or something when you guys picked jerseys and you're like i saved 11 for you i think that's because i remember i was like eh, like a number's a number and I, i i don't know i think i can't remember why i picked eight but it's kind of funny because that's what's in my email now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Braden Borders 8. That's so awesome. Like, oh, that's why. I forgot about that. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like you and I, I think it was because we were like doing like spring camp or summer camp. And then that's when you and I got to know each other pretty well. And that's why I was like, I can't do that for that guy. He's too nice. I appreciate it. So, but that, because you ended up switching numbers then, right? No, I stayed 11. You stayed my 11 whole... until you left to st- back down to Stansbury? I was 11 there too. I was like, I can't even remember what happened last week, let alone high school. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, yeah, I get that a lot. Like, people are like, oh, I didn't like you when I first met you. But I feel but, like when you get to know me a little bit, I'm pretty, pretty chill. The thing is, too, I think, because I was pretty introverted, too. Mm-hmm. It's funny, like, one of our other good friends, Carter, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we grew up playing, you know, like, flag, and we played Little League, and, you know, we took state by – seventh grade year Mm -hmm. or my eighth grade year i can't remember which one and then um 
Carter, one of the things he always tells me, he's like, Braden, do you remember when you were a nerd? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, dude, you used to like, we would be talking about video games and I'd be like, oh yeah, like I read this cool book. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, and then like things kind of changed and then I remember I was just super introverted and then I started hanging out with like dude dudes, uh-huh. you know, like guys that actually want to do guy stuff and then that's when you and I, uh, I think kind of helped each other not be so introverted. Oh, for sure. In football, 100%, like you can't be introverted. Yeah. At all. Especially trying to play quarterback and like I was going to some varsity practices and stuff and I'm like, I'm fucking... I don't know what the hell's going on. And like, well, I remember too, like, cause your dad was doing speed and agility at the time. And I was always, I was decently fast. You know, I think I would, I, I was top five of our team at least. Uh-huh. And so your dad like sought out, like, no, you need to come speed and agility. Mm-hmm. So I remember doing drills and like that stuff with you guys. And that's how we started getting to know each other. And then we started, you know, doing a what, seven on seven together. Yeah. Seven on seven so, with the high school and stuff. That was always fun. Yeah. And like, I feel like my dad, like seeing like potential in people and like coaching, like, I think that helps us like being a dad. And like, that's something I want to focus on is like when I get my son into sports and stuff is like yeah. helping train like his friends and like kind of getting that group around him. Yeah. Like, I think that helps growing up a little bit. Yeah. So you think Ezra's going to be quarterback too? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I can see it. Well, I want to I want to trade him as a kicker too. <laughs> a kicker. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, NFL uh kickers, you know. Yeah. They need them. There's that dude on So it's like if you can't beat out like a really good quarterback, like which is really hard to do, like at least you can be a kicker. Yeah, for real. Or at least go to college, get like an education in yeah. a kicker. I guess that we should probably look, you know, realistically, right? Uh, I'm like, <laughs> let's get him into college and see what he could do. Cuz well, there's that dude on TikTok. Um, oh, destroyer yeah. or whatever i'm like yeah you know he could be a fucking jacked kicker yeah so i mean i i think i've asked you but like you, you miss football you wish you would have went further i wish like i wish i would have tried at least yeah but my body was kind of destroyed and i was like mm, i don't know yeah kind of take a break you know it's funny because like you and i went and worked out together today we had a couple other guys we played ball with yeah how do your legs feel oh dude they're, they're shot we went and hit legs today if anybody's wondering and uh started on a sled and that was that was pretty tough yeah six plates <laughs> and then emilio you know you like got me to do what three plates for squat too i'm like yeah, mm-hmm. I i've done this before but anyways what i was bringing up is uh the, uh our, our coach that you know coaches forever he mm-hmm. was there and so i think like definitely he played a part in, in us because i remember him Constantly, he like, be like, quarters, why aren't you at morning weights? I'm like, coach, like, I, like, I want to sleep. Uh huh. And now he's like, well, why are you back in the gym? Like, don't you want to sleep? I'm like, no, like, things have changed. Yeah. And so, like, I definitely, I mean, I don't think I ever went to like college, but I wish I would have given it more attention. Yeah. And like, my dad told me that all the time, like, hey, you should probably, you know, focus more on this, not focus, you know, on the ladies. Yeah. So, Especially in high school, you know. So, like, I wish I would have taken it more seriously. Like, I remember you and a couple other guys always in the gym. You guys were always the big guys. And I was over here, like, the little guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, well, I was a little guy, too, for the first couple of years. Yeah, but your dad was, like, always getting you to, like, work out and go to camps. And, yeah. Like, you were more sports-oriented, for sure. And, like, now, like, as a dad, I, like, I want my kids to be like, hey, you know, like, there's time and a place for everything, right? Yeah. So, for me, I wish I would have taken some things a little differently in high school and just, you know, a kid general. Yeah. Just because things could have paid off a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But. Well, I definitely look into that, and I'm like, like my dad had a home gym, like, in his garage. Oh, yeah. And that helped a lot because, like, especially in the high school or, like, as a kid, you don't want to, like, go to the gym or, like, I wasn't, like, embarrassed, but I was, like, kind of afraid because I was a smaller dude, so I didn't want to really get in the gym or anything. So, like – being able to work out at home helped a lot. And, like, yeah. him getting me into that, getting me into the gym that way helped a lot. Yeah, I think for sure, like, for me, the big hang-up with going to the gym was, like, I didn't want to be that guy that, like, didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, for like, sure. I didn't want to be the guy that, you know, oh, look, he can only bench a plate. Yeah, I was and scared of that. Like, the thing is, is, like, I'm, like, 160, uh-huh. you know, weight-wise. And, like, statistically, I can't remember what it is, but if you can, like, bench your body weight like you're already like in the top like three percent yeah and i've been looking into that actually a lot lately because 
Um, like even just benching 225 is like a feat. Like you're in the oh, top. Yeah. I think it's like top one percent if you bench 225. Yeah, that's my goal. 225 is. Yeah. Are you I just close? Want to get two plates, dude. <laughs> like I, I can do like a plate in a 25, and that's like a good day. Oh yeah. So it, it's like my shoulder. I'm pretty sure it's from football. Uh, I've never really like actually got it checked out. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's from football. Probably. I mean, mine are from football. Like uh, when I went over to Stansbury, that's why. I, I played quarterback my junior year, but I wasn't – I didn't throw. I don't know if anybody picked up on that because I blew my shoulders out, actually. Like, they're still blown out. Like, I went to the um, Tosh doctors, and they, like, did the injections and, like, to see, like, what cartilage was still there. And my um, – I forget what it's called. But it, like, holds the shoulder in its yeah. socket. The rotator cuff is completely blown out. So, like, any time I try and make, like, a throwing motion, it was just yeah. out of socket. So that's why I made the change to D line, but like benching oh, yeah, and I forgot you did do that. Yeah, it was D end. Weird. Yeah, and uh, so like I made it like a point to try and work my shoulders and like my bench a little bit. Yeah, to try and like strengthen it because I don't want to get surgery on those, you know. So you haven't had surgery at all? No, they're still blown out. <laughs> <laughs> so like now, like when you like at the gym, do you feel like? That it's not, like, not stable anymore? Like, no, like, I... Does it cause you any problems, like, in your, like, life now? Not really. Like, anything where, like, I try to make a throwing motion or, like, at work, I'll have, like, my hands over my head because I'm an electrician. And, like, yeah. if someone's really heavy, it could... And, like, go in a negative motion, I could start to feel it. But... <laughs> and then, like, so you're benching is... No more. A little... I don't, I don't know. Not really. <laughs> I, uh... I've been benching and that's been like my main focus and I finally got 315. Dang. So, you know, that that was my whole goal, but like I tried 335 and I went down and as I was coming up I could feel my shoulders start to like want to slip out and that was a little mm-hmm. sketchy. Yeah, but <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I think we <clears throat> I think you and I were playing it was us against you and uh we were at your guys' stadium and I think someone sacked you and you got up like really slow and i felt so indifferent about it because i'm like this is like one of my good friends and like we're over here like i think like taking your shoulder out of <laughs> so i think you dislocated in that game or like you might have done something with your collarbone i can't remember so when i was playing with you guys we were playing twula yeah no what was it no we were playing stansbury i still played with you guys sophomore year that's when i broke my collarbone on stansbury's field yeah or it bent it didn't break good times but no my whole junior and senior year since they were blown out every time i'd like tackle it would come out it dislocate and relocate so i was like dislocating it 30 times a game 40 times a game like dangerous that is they you could pinch something and like cut blood flow off or like pinch a nerve yeah it hurt the doctor said you can't damage than what i damaged anymore so i could (laughs) deal with it Jeez. but um you know so do you think like I get uh, – some people ask me this, like, do you think football is, you know, what's helped you be a dad, like a good dad, do you think, so far? Or? So, I think so. And, uh, like, I attribute, like, kind of being a quarterback a little bit to that. Mm-hmm. Kind of, like, dealing with pressures and, like, play calls, and you have to be kind of decisive. Like, you can't second-guess yourself a lot. Yeah. And, like, I think that's helped. And, like, dealing with the pressures of life coming at you, like, having a – big ass dude rushing you you know like you can't just panic and like stuff happens in life where bills come unexpected like repairs or something you can't really oh yeah you know like a new homeowner yeah new homeowner especially like dishwasher goes out or something happens but so i i think like one of the questions like that i got for you is like what kind of dad do you want to be you know it's like you be like the super involved dad right or you can be like the dad that's always gone and you can be maybe like the dad that you know is like really gentle with your kids or whatnot but like, yeah like for me like so i i have three boys you mm-hmm. know, so i my oldest is four and then i have twins that are what, like nine nine and a half months now so and that's got to be tough it is yeah it, it's fun i really like I, I love being a dad but um like my four-year-old already like he he just keeps me on my toes yeah and so like one of the things that I remember learning from like my dad after football is it's like you have to put in the work, uh-huh. you have to put in the hard work, and not only that, but like 
um, essentially you're more or less like resilient. Yeah. And so like as a dad, like you have to be resilient. Yeah. Like 100% all the time. Like if, if the dad can't hold the family together, like the family starts falling apart. That's what I think. And I think like my dad and your dad was like really involved in our lives. And I think that helped like shape me as a person. And I, you know, shape you as well. And just like having a dad that's present, I think oh, yeah. helps the family a lot Absolutely. and helps the kids. So like, I want to be very involved in like coaching and yeah. just always be there. And like work's important, but like I give a shit about work. If like my son <laughs> has something going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. So like, uh, my oldest Brooks, like he, uh, he's at that age where he can like start playing sports now. So like, uh, this last fall, um, we kind of got into like a little late, uh-huh. but my wife was just going nuts. She's like, we got to get him into something. Like he needs something. Yeah. And so at that time, like the only thing he could play was soccer. Uh huh. And like, you know, I've always just played football. I played a little bit of like baseball when I was like really, really little. I didn't like it at all. And then I think I like played like one year of soccer. I hated it. Uh huh. You know, and like, I always want to be like, you know, like physical. Yeah. You know, like a boy, like that's what boys are, you know, physical. Uh huh. And so we, we got Brooks in the, in the soccer and the kid was just like an absolute animal. Uh huh. Like these kids were like a year or two older than him. Mm-hmm. And he was like out doing those kids. And That's like, awesome. You've never had a soccer ball in your life. And let alone like you don't understand like how to play. Yeah. But you're over here like scoring like every time he get the ball. That's awesome. Taking off. And like something like that, like I think just being athletic is like a big thing Mm -hmm. as a boy growing up or like even as a girl or like dad, like a girl dad or guy dad or whatever. Like I played a bunch of sports. Like I played soccer one year as a kid and like baseball and I did wrestling. I was very big into like wrestling as a kid. And like, I don't know, just being athletic and well-rounded I think helps later on. And then like when you get into high school and stuff, you can kind of pick what sport you want to be in Mm -hmm. and kind of focus. But I think like yeah. having your kids just try different sports is huge. Oh yeah. I mean, like don't get me wrong, like every sport has its, you know, pros and cons, just like anything in life. Yeah. Um, I just personally loved football just because it taught me so much. Yeah. Like it taught me to be tough, it taught me to be a man, it taught me to be resilient and like there'd be times where, you know, we would have like an absolute high because we were just destroying the other team. And then mm-hmm. you go up against a really good team and you'd be like Hey, I'm not all that. Yeah. Like I got knocked down and it's like, Hey, you gotta pick it up. You gotta go, go to the next game and like, just put that behind you. Yeah. And so like, I really like enjoyed football for that reason. And then of course, like just the brotherhood from all of it, you know, yeah. and we even had a, you remember when we had a, a female on our, on our team too? Like that was cool too. Yeah. And like, you know, you don't have to be a boy to play football yeah. or do sports or play soccer, you know, like, I don't know, like some dads have girls and they're like, oh, now I can't do any sports. It's like, no, there's plenty of sports <laughs> yeah. you could like be there and like 100%. have them do and be involved in, you know? Yeah. So I definitely think like I agree with what you said, like you have to be present, uh-huh. you know? So um, one of the things that, you know, my dad did for me and that I, I, I want to continue doing for my kids is, like you said, my dad was for the most time there, you know, like worked sometimes wouldn't allow him to be there. Uh huh. But like. My dad, you know, he's been a police officer for 17, 18 years. And uh-huh. like when he was working out here, my dad would come and coach us, like, in his police uniform. It was cool. That's awesome. And we, I was actually talking to my dad about this the other day. Um, in elementary school, <laughs> he, uh, he always threatened us that he would, you know, if you're not being good, I'm going to come to your class. I'm going to sit with you through class. <laughs> Just like an embarrassing thing, you know, like, like uh-huh. hey, put you in check. But, no, the cool thing that he would always do is, uh, sometimes you tell us, sometimes he wouldn't, but he would come and bring lunch to like like McDonald's or Arby's, you know, oh, yeah. like, hell yeah, it's a good day for, for school. Yeah, like dad and he, came and he would come sit down and he'd eat lunch with us in my class. Uh huh. And so uh, there's other people that I know now that are like, oh my gosh, Keith, you remember that one time that you came and you uh, had lunch with your boys? Like, I wish my dad would have done that. Yeah. And I think that's huge. And like, even in high school, I think you could remember, like my dad would always get us out of school real quick and like. Or, like, take us to Costa Vida and, like, meet us or something. But, like, I want to be involved with, like, my kid's school and, like, know his friends. And, yeah. like, I think that's huge. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, like, you know, my dad's uh, 
he's been a police officer for a long time. He's also been a firefighter for a long time. And then uh, he also worked on the ambulance for even a longer time. So like, mm-hmm. that's what he did when uh, my mom and my dad both had me. And so um, my dad always had a police car. Yeah. You know? And so he would always drop me off in the police car and kids would be like, oh my gosh, like, why is the police officer here? Because you know, <laughs> at this point in time, like, like school cops were kind of there, but not really there. Yeah. And every time I get out of the car, <laughs> he would uh, like get on the PA system, you know, that goes outside of the car. Uh-huh. He was like, I love you, Brayden. Make sure you don't, you know, color in the lines or, you know, just don't forget to wipe. And I'm like, dad, like, come on, you can't be saying that. But it was, it's just like stuff like that, that I remember from my dad. Then I'm like, Hey, that's a good dad. And now that you look back on that, you're like, damn, I'm so glad he did that. Like in the yeah. time it was probably embarrassing, but like, I want to do that for my son. And like, that's one thing I've learned about being a dad is you kind of got to be outgoing. And, uh, one thing my dad taught me is, uh, like whatever life hits, like, you know, sends your way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's important as a dad and like, as a husband is like, you can't really show your emotions a little bit. Like that's a little old fashioned, but like yeah. people don't talk about it, but like I'd get hit on the football field. And like when I broke my collarbone, I still got up and just walked to the sideline or like yeah. when I broke my ankle, I still tried to get up and just walk. And you know, like I was pretty good at like hiding, like how I really felt. And I feel like, in stressful times as a dad, you kind of have to do that. Yeah. Like, especially like bills are late or like something like that. You kind of just got to take it on the chin. And like, I don't re- want to really like show my kids, like, like we're ever struggling or something like that. I just yeah, want them to be kids. Not. Like I, I agree like to a point, you know, like, like my dad always, I mean, even to this day, like he's probably like looking at my dad like, dude, I don't want to mess with that guy. Yeah, for real. You know, uh-huh. like, he just has that like aura. But like at the same time, like, People that really know my dad, they're like, oh, my gosh, like, your dad's a really good dude. Like, uh, like he has his emotional side to him just like any other guy. And he, I think it's just more or less like you have to know your time and your place. Yeah. Right? So, like, I don't know about you, but, like, men's mental health is, like, a huge thing. Uh-huh. I mean, especially I think maybe our generation has just been doing better about this of actually, like, bringing that out. Because, like, statistically, like, males have a higher suicide rate than females do. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Of just because, like, they are dads uh-huh. and they have responsibilities and they have to do so many different things and have so many different hats. Yeah. And they're expected to rise up to that and sometimes they don't. Yeah. And that's when people forget, like, hey, like, he mentally is not doing okay and we're not, like, addressing that. Yeah. And so, like, we, I don't know about you and I, uh, but we've had countless friends, especially in high school, like, that took their lives. Uh-huh. You know, and that, that affected me then, and it still affects me now. Yeah. Like, I still have other friends that I didn't even know in high school that, you know, have been in that situation. And a lot of that is just, there's so much pressure on dads. Yeah. And then, as adults, too, like, learning how to be an adult now. And, like, that's why every time you see me, I try and be happy and, like, ask how you're doing. Like, you got to check up on your friends. Oh, yeah. And, uh, like, being a dad, I feel like you need a community around you. That's why I'm, like, always, like, hey, do you want to go work out? Yeah. And, like, I try and get you and a couple of friends to always go work out and, like, just have that little bit of space where, you like, you could vent to each other, like, Mm -hmm. say what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I mean – like the, it's that saying like when it takes a village to raise a raise a child oh yeah like like you said like a community essentially so like i have so many people that aren't my dad uh-huh. that i like looked up to or that the cool thing about like being a dad now and i'm sure you can attest to this is like if you didn't like a certain way of like hey i really like that my dad did this but i really didn't like that he did do, do this but hey i know this guy and i really like how he approached this yeah and how he's doing this so I want to do that too. And that's like the coolest thing that I mm-hmm. think is like a parent that you can decide like how you want to raise your kids. Yeah. But it's also like very scary because <laughs> you're like, dude, I got like such a huge responsibility. Like I, I remember when uh, like holding your kid for the first time. Uh-huh. What, what was it like when you held Ezra for the first time? Bro, I was crying. I was so emotional. Yeah. And like I'm not normally an emotional guy, but – it was cool. Like, if you're having a baby, you haven't had one yet. Ask the nurse if you could like help deliver. So oh, I got to, yeah. So I got to help deliver. So they scrub me in and everything. And yeah. I was the first one to catch him. So it's like I was the first person to ever like hold my son. Yeah. So like I got oh, down what, what and was like, that thought? <laughs> bro, it was scary. It was like 
I can't let him slip out of my hands, you know? So, like, I, mean, I got... No one tells you, but it's like wrestling like a greased pig. Yeah, it's... He's slippery. But <laughs> I got down and, like, I caught him. And, like, bro, I had tears in my eyes because I was like, this is my little dude, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was just kind of emotional the whole whole time he was born and everything. Had a draft later that night. <laughs> but in <laughs> fantasy... <laughs> But, don't worry, because Amelia right now is in the championship. Yeah. He auto drafted, so I think next year I might do this. <laughs> it like, worked out. Yeah, I actually did the same thing with my first. So, uh, like, I've been a I've been an EMT for heck since 2017. Yeah. So it's been a while, and like we always learn how to help deliver a kid, you know. And so uh, our doctor was really cool. I was like, hey, like I've always learned how to do this, but I've never really done it like for real. Uh huh. And she's like, well, if like your wife's okay with it, and then we'll let you do it. I'm like, dude, no way. That's so cool. So I remember like the same thing. Like, I'm like, Oh, this is going to be so cool. Well, first of all, if you've never watched childbirth, <laughs> it's a little crazy, it's a little scary. Uh, just cause like, that's the person you love, you know, and you're watching them go through all that pain. Uh huh. And then I remember as my son was coming out, I was just like, like, this doesn't look right. Like, uh huh. This is weird. Like this is freaky. Bro, their heads are all misshaped and everything. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, is he okay? So like, I, is what's wrong? Yeah, like, I remember like he came out, and for whatever reason, I don't remember why, but I was like, why? Like, I don't know why, but I felt like feeling like Jello. Uh huh. And I was expecting that. But those kids, they have bones. Uh huh. Just like everyone else. And so I remember like grabbing him. And I'm like, dude, this is like like the le- like a legit kid. Uh huh. And then like you know we pull him out and stuff, and then. You know, they clamp the cord, you cut the cord. And, oh, yeah. It's yeah, all rubbery and everything. It's like an emotional roller coaster, but like a really good roller coaster. Yeah. Really good emotional, like, tears in your eyes of, like, happiness. And... Oh, yeah. I mean, with our last, with the twins, it was, like, totally different, right? Because, like, it's more of, like, a high-risk kind of scenario. So, like, yeah. we delivered them in, a, like, an operating room uh-huh. just in case anything was to go wrong. Um, luckily, we didn't have to do a C-section, but I remember it's, like, it's kind of the same feelings, but you're just like more on edge. At least I was. Yeah. Because I was like, hey, like if anything goes wrong, baby A or B or mom, like any of them could like you know something could happen. Something could happen. And so, uh, Britain came out first, and then like four minutes later, Briggs came out. And so I remember because with Brooks, like he immediately cried. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like he's breathing, we're good. But then with Britain. Uh, cause like they're right next to the NICU just uh-huh. in case anything was to happen. And so they, like, I didn't in a weird way, like I wasn't worried about him yet. Uh-huh. Cause like they just kind of took him and they moved him over and then we were like, okay, like let's get you through this next one. Yeah. And so Briggs came out and he was like crying too, but like for a minute there, like he was purple, purple, like oh, he was God. not crying. And I was just like freaking out, you know, and, like my wife's just like, what's going on? And, like, <laughs> like, uh, like I have to like focus on you and like these two other kids. Like it's just overwhelming. It's tough. I couldn't even imagine that, dude. Like it, I really it was, couldn't. It was very, very dramatic. Yeah. Like not like a bad way, but I was just like, dude, like, please do not let anything bad happen to these kids. Uh huh. Because like those kids are my world. Yeah, that's how I am. I'm like I do anything for my kids. Like. And he's just four months old now, you know? Yeah. It's like, I'd do anything in the world for him. So easily. But. Have you seen that TikTok where uh, they ask moms, like, would you kill for your kid? Oh, my gosh, and yes. all of them are like, uh, I don't think I would do that. I'm like, what kind of a world are we living in nowadays? Yeah, for real. I'd easily, like, this sounds horrible to put on the internet, but I'd easily kill anybody for my kids. Like, like, I will go to jail if that means my kid gets to go home. Yeah, I'll. the way I look at it, it's like, I'll throw my life away for their life like that's an easy trade for me i think any good parent would say that i hope so i I you know because if not you shouldn't be a parent exactly and like i always ask people that question like if we were to leave ezra with anybody i'm like you know how do you feel about like protecting your kid and if they're like sketch i'm like i'm not leaving my kid with you oh yeah you know i'm like nope 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 yeah luckily i like i uh you and i have a mutual friend you you know matt Mm -hmm. so like matt's always been like a really really good friend and it's actually funny so like For you and Matt and McKinley, if you guys are listening, and I already told you this, like I didn't get to do your best man speech, but this is what my best man speech was going to be. So my dad always has taught me, like, if you have a really good friend, you should be able to trust him with your life, Mm -hmm. your wife, and your money. Uh huh. And I'm like, you know what? Matt has always been that guy for me. Yeah. Like I know that if I had to, I'd be like, hey, 
I need you to do this. I need you to take care of my wife. Mm -hmm. He came down to it, and I needed him to like protect me. I know he could. Yeah. You know, like I've never had an issue with him. Mm -hmm. So there's your best man speech if you're listening. Yeah, exactly. It's better than Jackson's that he had. Is that who ended up doing it? Yeah, <laughs> had to leave early. He, he his... was a little, uh, he was a little plastered, from what I heard. A little intoxicated. A little bit. There was some alcoholic beverages being consumed. Dude, you got to, you got to do it. And like, I had to leave early from his wedding, so I didn't get to see that because we had Ezra, and we didn't want to like impose too much, and we had to go check on him and see how everything's going. Yeah, we left too because Grandma had all three kids. <laughs> That's a little, lot. Yeah. So we kind of left a little earlier too, but yeah, that was fun. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely think you need to leave your kids with some, and that, that's your life. That's my life, you know? Oh yeah. So you need to be able to trust the person you're having yeah. to tell them. Like, I don't know how some parents just drop their kids off the daycare. And like, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But yeah, did you see what was in the news? Uh, -uh. So out here in Tula, there's a in-home daycare that one of the kids i think was like two years old uh -huh. had to go to primaries because of like marijuana in, in oh, the daycare shit. so it's like like you just never know yeah like that's the one thing that i mean i don't know how you how you view it but like for me with uh my dad my dad always made it a goal that he would always be like the man of the house that he would take care of us uh -huh. so that my mom could stay home with us yeah so like we never went to daycare and just as much as a dad is important like a mom is almost more important than a dad oh yeah because that mom's gonna like be the caregiver oh yeah you know and so like i told my wife that too i said you know if you want to work like you can work but i always i will always make it my goal that if you decide like hey i don't want to work anymore i just want to stay at home with the kid uh-huh and i will yeah and so i've always done that for her you know at the beginning of our marriage like i was not making any money mm -hmm. i was making like 11 75 an hour how the hell did you do it dude I don't know, but I mean, we made it work. We didn't have Brooks that, or I mean, like we did kind of early on, but like we made it work. Yeah. And so like things kind of work out, but I think that's one of the things you have to like look at yourself and be like, can I really do this? Yeah. Like you got to think like, it's okay not to be set up. Like yeah. it's okay not to have a house yet. It's okay not to, you know, be in your dream job making hundred K a year, you know? <laughs> Like everybody's like, oh, I want to have a kid when it's time. Like I want to be yeah. set up financially, have a house, this and that. And like, realistically, like there's never a good realistically, time. Realistically, I don't think it's possible. No. Like what, when you, get, when you and Drew were talking about like having kids, like did you guys ever think you guys would have had kids as soon as you would? Or did you guys want to wait? No, we wanted to wait for sure. Like I always said, like, I want to have a house at least yeah. until we start like trying. But, um, we moved into this house a year ago, luckily, and then found out we were pregnant with them two weeks later. We Oh, so it kind of worked out. Yeah, it worked out. But, like, that was a little hectic. But, like, there's never a good time. Like, we had them, got laid off or whatever from the job, and, like, you just kind of got to figure things out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? When you're an adult, like, mommy and daddy, I mean, they're still to help you, but, like, they can't just, like, bail you out anymore. Yeah. You know, like, it's you have a lot of responsibilities at that point that you have to do that. Yeah. So, but I mean, it, it's one of those things that like, if, if anyone out there is like thinking like, I want to have a plan of like X, Y, and Z, ABC, mm -hmm. like this needs to happen before any of that. Like it's a good idea. Yeah. It's great to have a plan. But I know personally that that just never works out. And then because, like, like it's like I said, it's like a, it's almost impossible. Like houses right now are ridiculous, bro. It's crazy. How much do you pay for like uh, diapers? They're expensive. As yeah, they're it's expensive. Like, I didn't know they were that expensive. Like all my kids, I love Costco. Costco babies. Yep. Like go to Costco. Box of diapers. Like, I mean, for one kid is awesome, but like for our twins, they go through diapers so much. I couldn't but, like, imagine. It's like Fifty bucks. Yeah. And like. People don't go to Costco because they're like, oh, the membership fee, it's worth it. For diapers, oh, ba anything for babies, like go to Costco. They have the muffins there you could get. You oh, know? dude, poppy seed muffins are <laughs> yeah. where it's at. Poppy seed and the chocolate muffins. I get. <laughs> you have to get two boxes. I get them both. Yeah, I mean, like, 
uh, I don't know, some people might not know, but like you can like go to your doctor's office and they like, ask uh-huh. for like samples of like formula. Uh-huh. They're like these smaller cans. So like with Brooks, like he had to have like the special formula. Uh-huh. And if you go to Walmart for like the big can, it's like 60 bucks. Oh my gosh. And so I just, I mean, you do what you have to, but like you're crunching your paycheck. Yeah, for sure. I think anyone our age right now is living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I, I don't know anybody who's not, you know? I mean, there's times where you're like, okay, like, do I spend money on formula and diapers or do I spend that money like on me? Yeah. And as a dad and a mom and mm-hmm. an adult, you kind of have to decide, like, well, my kid come first. Yeah. I put a lot of stuff on my credit card just solely for that purpose, you know, like, yeah. okay, well, I'll pay this back when I can pay it back, you know? And like, it's okay to get in a little bit of debt, but as a parent, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. That's tough, man. It's really tough. But I wouldn't have, like, done it any other way. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Like, this story with how we had Ezra, I don't know if I've talked about this, but Uh-oh. <laughs> um, we got the house, and uh, two days later, we went to the Rose Bowl. We had mm-hmm. Utah tickets because Utah was there. So we went to the Rose Bowl, and then we went to Disneyland while we were there, and it was a raining mess. But, like, <laughs> we lost, right? Yeah, we lost. Yeah, bad. we lost pretty bad that year. But, like, we went to Disneyland, and, like, it's funny because, like, I kept seeing all these little kids, and I was like, man, I want a little kid. Like, I'd love to have a little kid here right now, and they're, like, all happy and everything, and I was like, damn. I even told my wife, I'm like, damn, I'd I'd have a little boy right now. You know, like, I'd love that. And then we came home a week later. She's like, guess what? I'm pregnant. <laughs> Happiest I'd ever been. So yeah. just it's funny how, like, you have that intuition a little bit. But speaking on that, I'm um, like, I heard a, a stat that like expecting dads lose like so much testosterone and like you kind of see that you kind of put on like pregnancy weight because yeah. as a dad, just because like your wife's eating and like you can't make a meat alone, like you don't want to do that. Well, I don't even care about her eating alone. Sorry, Shelby. <laughs> but I more or less was like. If I'm buying you food, I'm buying me food. Oh, for sure. I'm hungry. Yeah. And they always want something good. So it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll eat that. Dude, American burger, jalapeno poppers. That's my weakness. Oh, yeah. Me too. Onion rings. Oh, my gosh. I, I get those. I get those every time I go there. Dude, they're so good. But like as a as a dad, that's why I've been hitting the gym so much. It's like yeah. I seen uh, his, his name's Keith or whatever. He does like the TikToks. He's that UFC fighter that reviews oh, yeah. food. And uh, oh, he's a UFC fighter. Yeah, I didn't know Keith Lee is. Yeah, he there. actually uh, started TikTok so he could get more like comfortable in front of cameras and like speaking on the internet. I like that guy a lot. Yeah, I do too. So I was like, you know what? He could do it. I'll do it. Like you know, yeah. He stays in shape and like the gym just supports my bad eating habits. Dude, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, I mean, like already, like we're what, however long we're into this podcast, like it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. No, it's pretty. You know, you I think this comfy. is the, probably the easy part, right? And like, like you said, like editing and all that probably takes a lot of the time. It takes some time, but I think, like, for me, like, because I've always like I listen to so many podcasts, uh huh. And it's like, for for our generation, I think it's like we've re- like really put out like like podcasts are cool, uh huh. But it's like, why would you want to like sit there and listen to people? <laughs> yeah, it's like, for, for real. Me, like, I like like the humanity of it because uh-huh. like you and I can have a good conversation, right? Mm-hmm. But people out there like that don't know us, like we'll never get to have that unless they like really get to be there. Or never get to know us or yeah. get advice or anything. But like I think a big part of it is like you and I get to have a good conversation that other people get to listen to. Mm-hmm. Either take like you said, I think with you and Carver, like you guys get to like kind of take what you want from that. And like uh-huh. sometimes it might be something that they wanted to hear or they didn't know. And like, like oh like that's kind of cool, but I've always wanted to do like have my own podcast. So yeah, you I should. Know, maybe I would. You should. It's fun. And like, I can help you. Cause like, I'm learning like the different camera setups and like, like I've added a light. It's kind of yeah. weird. Like, it is a little weird, but you kind of get used to it. You know, you get used to it and like different mic setups and stuff. And I don't know, it's a fun hobby. And like, like I said, like it helps me like get to hang out with people as a dad. Like, yeah. you know, like you're so busy, you don't really get time just to, hang out and talk to your buddy one-on-one, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, especially, like, for us, like, today we we hung out with, you know, two of our good friends. Like, one of them we haven't seen for a while because he's yeah. been gone. And so, like, I mean, there's I, – I don't have, I would say, like, a lot of friends because, uh-huh. like, I am more focused on 
like my life with my my family and you know providing for them but i think at the same time like a podcast is a great way to like get back to those guys that you used to like hang out with yeah exactly and then like you can also like have people you don't really know yeah get, you know to to know even better like we were even talking about having your brother on and like i don't really know your brother that well but, yeah you know it'd be fun <laughs> to sit down and talk to him and like get to meet new people and that's one thing i think i'm good at is like talking to new people different people like i work construction a lot of my life you talk to everybody and anybody all different walks of life huh yeah you talk to people that got their shit together and they own the company or they own the contracting like business or talk to somebody that just got out of the porter potty and smoking dope you know like <laughs> but you, you know like you got some like yeah. everybody's got stuff to say and like i hope i think that's helped me in my life is like i take a little bit from everybody like you know, you might talk to some dude and be like, yeah, I don't want that shit, you know? Yep. Like, I'm definitely not going to do what that guy did. Yep. But he might say some wisdom like, yeah, don't do that. Or you talk to somebody who's got their shit together and, like, owns the business and, uh -huh. you know? Like, I've worked for a couple of really good dudes that have on their own business. And, like, you want to take that and, like, sorry, excuse me. You could take, like, being a CEO or, like, a business owner into being a dad. And, like, yeah. running a family, really. Yeah. Because, like... You know, you got to look at expenditures and yeah. where you spend your time and how long you spend your time there. Like, I could only like really spend an hour at the gym because yeah. you know. Yeah, I kind of got in trouble for that today. Yeah, we were there for a little bit longer. I did too. Emilio decided that he just wanted to make his work harder today, <laughs> which is never a bad thing. Like, that's what I like about like-minded people. Uh huh. Like, if anything that I've learned from like podcasts is like you start to find like your people. Uh-huh. Right. So like, I think like for you and I, it's like you and I have like been talking a lot more and I'm like, Hey, like Emilio and I are like in the same boat. Like uh -huh. this is nice. Cause like for a while there I was on my own, mm -hmm. you know, like none of my friends, I like me and maybe one of our other friends, like were the only ones that had kids at the time. Uh huh. And so like now my oldest is four and now everyone else is starting to have their kids. So I'm like, I'm not like saying like I'm the big papa of our friends, yeah. you know, but it's like, like, hey, like, like the other day you're like, hey, like, like this is what's going on. Sorry, we can't do the pod. I'm like, dude, like it's totally fine. Like I get it. Yeah. Like you don't have to apologize to me. Like I've been there, I've done that. Totally get it. Uh huh. And so like what's cool? Excuse me, I'm the one burping now. <laughs> Passed it on. Yeah. So, but like, I know that if I was ever to be like, hey, Amelia, like I really need you to like come over and like help me with this or like if if your boy is giving you a, like a rough time uh-huh that i would hope that you'd be like hey like right now obviously he has three kids he kind of knows what he's doing yeah like let's have him come over and like help us yeah so like for you and i i mean i think we were talking about this like a while back but it's hard finding friends that are in the same stage of life uh-huh because for a long time like everyone is in so many different stages of life and they just don't understand especially in the early 20s like yeah, people going out partying and people that get really sucked into their career and that's all yep. they do. And like then people have families and like that sucks you in. Like mm -hmm. once Ezra came, it's like that's your main focus. Like oh, yeah. you know? And then like especially as they're so little, you wanna spend that time with them. And I'll I'll touch more on this in a minute, but you know, like finding that community, like you if you need help or like want to go to the gym, you could always hit me up or you know. But, like, some people, like, don't know me or whatever. Like, listen to the pod. I don't yeah. know. Like, <laughs> get some advice. Like, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a sucker for my fantasy football pod. Uh-huh. And it's weird because, like, it's, like, these three dudes I've never talked to in my life, but I feel like I know so much about them. Yeah. That I could be like, hey, dude, like, let's go hang out. Yeah, know? for real. Um, a little off subject, but, like, they did, like, a Spotify Live one time. Uh -huh. And I was, like, asking, like, a start-sit question. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... They were like, oh, my gosh, like, look at this guy. Like, I can't remember what it was. It was, like, when Derrick Henry was, like, really doing well. Uh-huh. But, like, for, like, the last couple of weeks, he was, like, complete crap. And I was like, I'm thinking of benching Derrick Henry this week. And they're like, oh, my gosh, like, this guy has the biggest balls ever. <laughs> so, like, they actually, like, brought me on, like, live. Nice. And I was, like, so starstruck. I bet. And I was just, like, like, my heart was pounding. And I'm like, dude, this is so cool. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, like, community is, like, huge. Yeah, I think so. And like, I listen to Joe Rogan, you know, yeah. the king of podcasts, boy the boy Joe. And I feel like I know him, but like, he'll say some shit or have some like guests on that. I'm like, I really like 
there's certain guests that he has recurring that I really love to listen to. And like, you feel like, you know, and I don't know, just want to create like a little community with this yeah. pod. But I, I think that's cool. Yeah, I think so. But, um, shoot, what was I going to touch on? I forgot what I was going to say, but anyway, talking about like fantasy football, how does being a dad and like watching football and sports and how does all that work out with three kids? <laughs> well, like I'm not going to lie. I don't really watch as much as I would like to. Uh huh. Like I'll throw on a game every once in a while. Like I'm a huge Ravens fan. Uh huh. So like usually when they'll play, I'll, I'll like try to make that more of a priority to watch. Um, but like the majority of the time, like I'm not even watching the game. Yeah. Just because like you just don't have time for it. Uh huh. So like like that's why I got you guys involved with this like last two seasons or whatever. Because I'm like same thing as you. Like I wanted to bring. A group of guys together that are somewhat like minded uh-huh. football, football, and then hopefully we could like do more stuff throughout the season, which we didn't really get to do this year, but maybe will happen next year. But like we went out, and it happened to be that you were having Ezra, mm-hmm. but we went out to you know B Dubs and had a good time. But we got, we got to watch the Utah game, yeah. Um, eat some wings and have some good good conversations, and I think that's just what it is. Is just you want to have that. Because, like, when you get out of high school, you don't have that anymore. Yeah, like it's You don't tough. have your buddy to, like, go hang out with in between class or, like, you don't have football. Yeah. You think you're going to be buddies with people forever, and you get out of high school the next year, and it's everybody's gone doing different things. Off to college, off into their jobs and stuff like that. Yeah, it, but, it's definitely tough. But, like, so I think I told you the story. So one night, I mean, like, I don't watch a whole lot of shows anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're always like watching, like you and I said, like Dancing Fruit for our boys because like, uh-huh. that's the only thing that like they'll pay attention to. New parents out there, Hey Bear is a savior. Oh yeah, look it up on YouTube. Uh, I really like Bluey. Bluey's good. Bluey's like hands down not just a kids show. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I actually learned about that from my fantasy football podcast. Really? <laughs> yeah. Before it was big, like this guy's like, "Hey, you gotta watch this," and I was like, "Whatever." And Brooks was like one or two at the time. And I was uh-huh. like, dude, this is the coolest thing ever. You're like, hell yeah. Because like, it's like a good combination of kid show, but it was also a really good combination of like, hey, adults can like relate to this. Uh huh. So I think it's cool. But uh, anyways, the other day we were like watching whatever and I wanted to watch football. And so I was like, oh, we'll just watch whatever Brooks wants to watch. And well, I went and did something and the wife came back and she's like, you won't believe what just happened. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, Brooks wants to watch football and I put football on and that's all he wants to watch now. That's awesome. So like, it's kind of cool that I get to do that now, you know, cause he's getting to that age where he can understand. Yeah. So I hope that he gets to have those kinds of experiences with his dad. So uh-huh. that, that's all I want to like, you know, have that bond. Yeah. And I remember what I was going to say now. Sorry. Speaking of sports and stuff like that, like Ezra came right at the start of football season like we were in the post delivery room and the utah game was on like we said the fantasy draft was happening so like every every time a football game's on he's young enough where i could just like put him on my chest and he could fall asleep or whatever but now he's at the point where that's all he wants to watch like he he likes the colors and stuff is what i think it is (laughs) yeah but like if it goes to commercial he gets all upset and it comes back on he's like okay i'm chilling now yeah which is pretty cool but like how is being there for your kids like i feel like like being in the stands is big for kids when they start mm-hmm. sports and like are doing stuff. Like I feel like it starts when they're kids, like babies, oh, yeah. like cheering them on. And like, even like where he's starting to sit up and stuff and just kind of like yeah. being there. Yeah. I mean, cause Ezra's not really rolling around yet. Right. Like, he has a couple of times. Okay. So like my boys, like they're just, they're zoomers. Uh-huh. They're just like constantly taking off. You know, Brooks is constantly hitting everything of his body everywhere Uh so he's always getting into something and then like the twins like like they're just crawling everywhere Mm -hmm. um i kind of get on the wife sometimes because like they'll like hurt themselves and like they're waiting for that parent reaction because she'll always go Uh don't do that like that's that's what's going to make them be like oh i'm getting a negative reaction out of my parents yeah and so like i should like cry so like in a way i'm like like we're gonna make them tough Uh uh-huh so like you get hurt like, dude, it's okay. Get up. You're yeah, fine. You're good. You're chilling. Because I mean, like nine times out of ten, they really are. Yeah. You know, so like I, I want just like my kids to be tough. Yeah. You know, it's like you get those other parents that you've probably seen that you're like, 
they just fell off the swings at school or whatever and they're like oh it's okay like let's put ice on this let's put band-aid and like you sit down and relax no yeah we're gonna be we're gonna be big boys yeah because that's what we're gonna do uh-huh so i mean it, it's it's interesting i've seen a tiktok on that like how you react when they fall off of something or like hurt themselves kind of like is huge like if you run up oh my god are you okay like yeah They'll start crying and reinforce it and like you could laugh or be like you good and they'll like start laughing and like oh okay they're yeah. not gonna come like just pick me up yeah and like i think it's important to be there but like you gotta be tough oh 100 percent. i mean there's always like i said there's a time and a place for everything right like uh-huh. sometimes it's okay to be like uh, a little more emotional uh-huh because it you have to be emotional as a dad and as a, as a father uh-huh and but there's just a time and a place for that. Yeah, I think so. And uh, have you ever like watched your kids just you? Well, your wife's gone. Oh, dude, constantly. And it's like probably like for the first time, it's really overwhelming. Uh huh. You know, because you're just like, it's it's like weird to be like, oh my gosh, like I don't have someone here to help me. Yeah. And you're like, I remember like the first time that like Brooks had like a blowout. I was like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to do this. <laughs> and I'm like trying to like figure out a way so like he's not rolling in it. Uh -huh. So that it's not getting on me. And then you're just like, okay, well, if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. Yeah. So like you kind of just have to do it. Uh huh. So, but like even with the twins now, like it's just like we have a, a routine, right? Uh huh. You know, so it's like, okay, get the boys up. Okay, they're going to go hang out in their bouncer or they're going to go ha hang out in their playpen. Okay, here we get Brooke some food. My boys love eggs. Really? So, Britton and Briggs, my twins, uh -huh. like I said, they're only like nine, ten months. Like, they will eat three eggs to themselves. That is crazy. So, like, I make scrambled eggs and then I make enough so I can give some to Brooks. Uh -huh. And then the other twins, I'm just like, here you guys go. <laughs> and they just, they just eat it. <laughs> Starting them on a high protein diet oh, yeah. at a young age. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I, we need some big boys. Oh, yeah. We need some football players. We need some football players. Yeah. Um, sorry to backtrack, but, like, going back to, like, sports. Uh -huh. So, like, when Brooks was playing soccer, um, his coach was, like, doing something one week. And the other players' parents, like, weren't the most sporty people. Uh-huh. And so he had asked, he's like, I need somebody to coach. For me uh -huh. like, dude i have no idea about anything about soccer and it's like well the cool thing is is like if they kick it this way it goes out this way like you you just you know give it back to the other coach and then they go do their thing or like you know you don't really have to know a whole lot to do it so I was like okay and then i was kind of like well I'll, I'll let like one of the other dads you know take this one yeah well no one stepped up <laughs> so i was like and it was more or less just because, like, they're like, if we can't do it this week, we have to postpone a game to, like, the next week. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do two games in one week. Yeah. So I'm like, I guess I'll coach. Uh-huh. Dude, it was the hardest thing ever. Dude, coaching little kids is crazy. It was like hurting cats. Uh-huh. Hurting chickens. Uh-huh. And constantly I was, like, diffusing, like, little, you know, breakdowns of kids. Like, two kids would, like, fight with each other. I'm like, okay, like, let's not do that. Uh-huh. And then I'd be, like, yelling at other ones. And the other ones just didn't want anything to do with it. Like, they'd be laying on the ground. Uh-huh. So, like, but I did it because I wanted to do that for my kid. Uh-huh. And it was it was cool because, like, he's like, oh, Dad, remember that time you coached me? I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. dude, it was fun. And, like, that's getting you out of your comfort zone. And I feel like getting yeah. out of your comfort zone for your kids is huge. Because, like, uh, I don't know. I, I've started doing speed and agility like my dad did back yeah. in the day. And, like, just like you said, it's like hurting chickens <laughs> and like wow. some of them are super into Dude, it. And some of them spans. Yeah. Not there. Some of them are like, coach, I want to go home. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. we just started. So yeah. I'm sorry, dude. That was the thing. They'd always be like, coach, I need a, I need a drink. Uh huh. I'm like you've been in for like a play. Uh huh. You can't I'm like, you got to stay in. And I think that was like the cool thing. Like just being in a coach's role too. Yeah. Cause you also get to make an impact on other people's kids uh-huh so you're like i like there's this one kid that just was like such a bully uh-huh and like i kind of like in a nice way like put him in his place i'm like no you're not gonna do that yeah because the coach like he's a good dude but like he would just kind of let things happen uh -huh. like, no we're not gonna do that so. and little kids are the funniest like i coached tackle football back in the day they say some funny off the wall oh, yeah. shit like, I always love those mic'd up oh, yeah. videos of like those little kids and they're just like saying the weirdest things. Uh-huh. 
I was like, I think they're in like third grade. They're like eight. And I'm like, you guys got any girlfriends? And they're like, I've got a girlfriend coach. The other one's like, coach, I've got three girlfriends. I'm like, I'm like oh, sure. I'm like, okay, buddy. Yeah. And like, one's like, I wish I lived by the field so I could just come hop the fence and practice. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you like it here. Sorry, well, while we were talking, I was trying to pull it up because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh huh. So, um, you're you're like saying like you know like the kind of dad you'd like to be. Uh huh. And like I so I've been in the military now for seven years going on eight oh shit so it's like that's taught me a lot you know uh-huh. I, I i contribute a lot of it to you know like just are you being mentally resilient like yeah. we were saying um this is like one of my favorite quotes that like came from the military kind of term i can't remember who said it i think it was from like a long time ago but it's like it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war you bro that one yes i have i love that quote yeah that's like top 10 for me yeah top five that's top three for me. I live by that, I think. Because, like, I mean, if you look at things right now, and uh, just to kind of bounce around a little bit. So, like, when I found out we were having Brooks, I was like, oh, like, I'm excited. But, like, I've always wanted a little girl. Uh huh. Because I'm the oldest of four boys. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, we need a girl in the family. And then I was pretty distraught because I was like, great. The border's curse. All we have is boys. Uh huh. Well, then we had the twins and found out we were having twins. And I was like, first of all, I was like, holy shit. Like, I did not see that coming. Yeah. Like, that was like, talk about a bombshell, dude. Uh-huh. You're like, well, okay. But, like, I can't, like, just, like, you can't make that decision. Like, I'm, I don't want just, like, one. Yeah. Like, you just have to leave it as it is and uh-huh. just have to deal with it. But, like, I was like, okay, well, maybe I have, like, a decent shot at least having a girl with one of the twins. Yeah. Well, I even screwed that up. I had a 50-50 shot, and I still screwed it up. Got all boys. But, like, looking back at things, I'm like, you know what? That's okay, though, because we need tougher men, and I hope that I can do that for my boys to provide that to the world because, I mean, as it is, like, you know, politically as it is, like, it's so tough already. So I wish and hope that I can, like, set my boys up mm-hmm. to where they're not going to have to be those that are like questioning everything. Yeah. They just, they know who they are. They're tough and they know like what they want and they're going to be able to like do what people need them to do. Yeah. Not rely on anybody to make decisions either. Cause it's like, I'm not all about this. We call it, it's a joke that we always have in my family. We're like, stop being a sissy Lala. Uh huh. But I'm like, I'm not going to have a sissy Lala. Yeah. I'm going to have a boy. Yeah. And that boy is going to do what a boy becomes into a man and what a man's supposed to do. Yeah. He's going to defend him and his family and he's going to be a protector and he's going to provide. Yeah. Because I'll be damned if that doesn't happen. Yeah. That's what you want for your kids. And like, I want nothing but my son to be better than me in every aspect of life. Like, that's all I want for him, you know? Yeah. And like, so I got to push myself. So it in turn pushes him. And like, you got to set a good example. And uh, what I've been living by, kind of like that. You want to be a warrior in a garden, not a gardener in a war. Like, I want to show my son it's okay to be, like, masculine, you know? Yeah. And I want to show him, like, like I'm I'm trying to look like a, you know, like, get big and, like, okay, dad could do anything, you know? Yeah. Like, I want him to look up to me and not be like, oh, so-and-so's dad's huge. Like, he'd yeah. probably kick my dad's <laughs> ass. And, like, yeah, my dad's been pretty big and, like, Your dad is you know? Big. And, like always fighting and stuff growing up and whatever, but it's like you don't want him to fight anybody, but like knowing that your dad could kick someone's ass, like just kind of helps your like confidence. Yeah. Like, Oh, my dad could get me out of this situation. Did your dad ever teach you to probably, I'm assuming probably because our dads are pretty similar, but like, he's like, you're never going to start a fight. You're going to finish it. You're going to end a fight. Uh huh. I I, I live by that too. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's interesting, but yeah, I mean, you asked me to like bring some stuff up. So like, uh, I, I don't think you've even known about this. So like there was a time, so like I got back from basic training in AIT, you know, my medic training that I did for a while. Uh-huh. And, uh, I got back and I got to my unit and like, you know, you're supposed to do PT tests like every like, six months, I think. Uh huh. And so like I passed the first like couple and I was like maybe one, two years in. Yeah. But, talk about a weak mindset. Like I was not like focused on like my physicality at Uh the time. 
So like I wasn't going to the gym. Like I I've always been a guy that's like pretty active. Yeah. But like I hated waking up, like I said, for for weights in the morning, and I just hated like you know taking that time away. But like I've just found a love again for it because yeah. like, I just love it. It's awesome. But for a while, um, I wasn't passing my my PT tests. So it's like a two mile run, and then you have two minutes to do push ups and sit ups, and of course there's like minimums and maximum. Uh huh. And so like I do good on my push ups and my sit ups, but like my run time, I was always like twenty or thirty seconds off. Oh shit! So like for a year straight, my uh my command they were like, you're flagged, meaning like you can't be promoted, uh-huh. you can't receive any awards, and you have to take a PT test every time you come to drill, uh huh, so that you can get off of this, and you have to pass three in a row. Ooh. And so at that point in time, like I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I don't want to be in the military at all. Like I did what I wanted to do, to a point. Yeah. But at the same time, like. The only thing that kept me going was my son. And at the time, it was just Brooks. And I was like, I don't want him to grow up knowing his dad's a quitter. Uh huh. And his dad's just going to lay down and die. Yep. Because I'm not that person. And I knew that was the case. Well, long story short, like I'd pass one, then I'd fell one. I'd mm-hmm. pass one, I'd fell one, I'd pass, pass, you know. And so for the longest time, that was going on. And that's the only thing that kept me going. And so I finally just gave it everything. And, uh-huh. I, and I finally got over it. And now I'm like, I don't have an issue with it at all. That's awesome. So it's just like, like you said, like my biggest motivator in life is my kids. Yeah. Like Ezra's on my screensaver and every time like I can't get a lift or it's like, fuck, I don't want to do this lift. I'm just going to go home. Yeah. You know, I like look at my phone to see what time it is. I'm like, no, like this little dude's like depending on you to be an example. And so like it pushes me to go get that extra setting, go get that extra rep in, you know? Yeah. Just to kind of do it for my kids, you know? I don't know. That sounds stupid, but, like, <laughs> yeah. setting that example of, like, we're not quitters in this household. Or, like, yep. you know, we push ourselves. We step out of our comfort zone. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's huge. Like, my brother and I, before he uh, he left, um, he uh, would be my, my gym partner. Uh-huh. And, like, him and I never had, like, the greatest relationship in high school. Like, I was always, he, like, had my head somewhere else. And I wasn't worried, like, really worried about my brother. And, like, now I realize, like, I should have done better, yeah. you know, that I wish I would have included him in more things. Uh-huh. And so uh, it's been better. Like, we've been getting along, like, a lot. Like, we FaceTime, like, four or five times a day sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, like, I want my boys to be able to have that good relationship with their brothers, too. Yeah. But uh, where I'm going with this is when we would work out and I'd be like, oh, like, I just don't want to go today. Mm-hmm. I get a phone call like, hey. You're coming to the gym. Yeah. I don't want to go. Like, no, you're coming to the gym. Like, he was always pushing me to do that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, same thing. Like, I'm like, I don't want to do that heavy weight, dude. He's like, Braden, what would David Goggins <laughs> well, or Ronnie Coleman say if they heard that and they were right here? I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. And I, I know, like, we like to joke about it. Like, who's going to carry the boats? Uh-huh. Okay, but, like, it's, like, a legit thing. Like, yeah. like masculinity, like you said, like, is just being attacked. Like, mm-hmm. It's okay. To be a man. Yeah. Be a man. Be a goddamn fucking man. Yeah. <laughs> like David Goggins, like you like him or not, like, yeah, he's a good motivator. Yeah. Well, like I heard a quote from TikTok from the that he was on a podcast. I don't know what one it was, but he was like, you know, like what if one day you get to heaven and God's like, Oh, calls your name and he's like, Okay. You know, like for him, he's like Navy SEAL, pull up champion or whatever, world record holder and all these things. And he's like, No, that's not me. I'm 300 pounds. I worked at the fucking exterminator place my whole life. (laughs) He's like, what if like that was supposed to be you, but you didn't do anything about it. You know, like you have so much potential and I think everybody does like, you know, just get off your ass a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it pushes you to hear that. Like, man, you could, you can be what you are now or you could be better. You could always be better. I I think you probably feel the same way, but like at the end of the day, like when we get to that point and you look back on your life, you're like, I don't want to have regrets. I don't yeah. want to have, I wish I could have done this. I could have done this better. I mean, we're always going to think like that, but like, I hope that I can like teach that to my boys. Like, Hey, like give it everything you got every time, every uh-huh. snap, every rep, like every chance you get, like make it count. Yeah. Because at some point, like for me and you, like football's done. Yeah. It's over. And I wish I would have done a little bit better. Yeah. You know? Um, but like anything in life, like you have to give it everything you got to. And like, luckily I 
I gave it that in high school for the most part. I just didn't want to push myself to go beyond, but yeah, which I wish I would have. But like in the high school, like whenever you lose, there's people crying in the locker rooms and yeah. stuff. And like, I'm like, man, don't do that. But like, I only thought that way because it's like, I gave it my all. So like, yeah. I'm not going to cry about it. Like, yeah, I fucking lost, you know, like I was bested, but like, I know that I gave it my all. So I'm not going to be sad about it. And so like, luckily I've carried that through my life. Like whenever like you get down or something, it's like, fuck, I'm giving it my all. Yeah. Like I'm laying it on the line. I'm not going to be sad about it. I'm just going to, that doesn't help anybody. Yeah. All right. And we're back. I took feel better. Took a little pee break. Dude, it's, it's between all my like pre-workout and then I drink a protein shake. And then like you said, water, my voice is like somewhat scraggly. Uh-huh. But dude, like oh, yeah. I always listen to podcasts. I'm like, damn. Like, they talk for a long time. Uh-huh. And sometimes they don't even have pee breaks, but you always got to take a pee break. <laughs> Especially yeah. like what kind of like pre-workouts and stuff do you use? Uh, I'm a big fan of bucked up. Okay. I mean, it just kind of depends. And then sometimes I'll switch it up. Like I used, like, have you ever heard of Insane Labs? I haven't. So it was like this one that I was uh, like given by somebody else and it like was really great. Like I had like a good focus. Uh huh. But I kind of just, honestly, whatever. Yeah. I like feeling the tingles. Dude, I love feeling the tingles. I feel like pre workout's not hitting if I don't feel like a. Yeah crackhead before i work out are you know? trying mother bucker yet by bucked up yes okay i, like, I have to use that or like the high stim stuff yeah that's what i just got again i've used it the one time and then i i liked it mm-hmm. and then i just haven't gotten it back till now yeah i always we went to the bucked up store for christmas actually to get my brother-in-law stuff and i was like didn't see any mother bucker i was like you guys got any mother bucker and they're like oh we have to keep it in the back I'm like what is in this stuff like no it's because they, they keep probably selling out of it uh-huh probably because like i need that high stim like i want to be like itchy and stuff like i feel like that's what really gets me going yeah i just hate the after effects because like i'll be driving home and like i'll like get into my truck and you're still and itchy I'm, like, and... like i sit down like i feel it in my legs i'm like i kind of don't like that like yeah. when i don't want it uh-huh. but, like when i want it i like it yeah i got this new stuff called rise oh, it's yeah. like godzilla on it and it's their high stim like mother bucker like competitor or whatever but they have like a time release so, like, mm-hmm. you could drink it all, and throughout your workout, you'll constantly be getting that little... See, I think bucked up is, like, good, but not for that. Yeah. Because, like, it, like you get up to here, and then it's just, like, constantly down. Uh-huh. So, you'll have to try that. Yeah, I like it because it's, like, constantly you're getting that little bit, little hit through, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Do you drink creatine and stuff? Yeah, so, I mean, like, my normal, like, regimen is, you know, I work out, like, three to four times a week. Uh-huh. Um, and then I do creatine with aminos for like my this is my shaker bottle, um, so I just do like the five or ten milligrams of creatine uh-huh. with that. And then um, my pre workout, whatever I choose. And then like I like to fill the pump, so yeah. like bucked up gives the pink Himalayan salt pills. Uh huh, dude, try it. I have if to try have those. It, like any salt, like is great. So like I can't like just like eat something with salt. Like I tried it. Uh huh. And like this is just too much. So, like, the pill, you don't even feel it, you know, because it's a pill. Yeah. So, I've been doing that, and then, like, I'll take, like, magnesium. Okay. Too. Um, I tried ashwagandha for a little bit. I don't think it really does anything. Yeah. I mean, for, I think it's just a placebo, but I tried it for a little bit. I've been taking that, and, like, I heard that it helps, like, chill you out a little bit. Yeah, that's why I did it for that and the stress. Uh-huh. You know, I'll just being at work. Yeah. So. What kind of work do you into? dude everything i know you do a lot yeah i have my hand in everything so like i said like i've been in the military for about like seven years now seven uh-huh. eight years um i just re-upped for another six years oh my gosh so I'm, I'm planning on doing a full 20 yeah because like by the time i'm 37 i can retire out of the guard yeah so i've been a medic for them for a while um then i am also a full-time police officer wow so i've been out on the road this february will be two years uh-huh and then uh, I also just a volunteer firefighter out here. So that is, I, I have you do a lot. everything, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I wear a lot of hats, not all at the same time, but every hat has its time and a place. Yeah. And then of course, you know, full-time dad, full-time dad. <laughs> that's, how, that's how is being a one. cop and like a firefighter and being in the national guard? How does that? Like, what do you mean? Affect, like, like being a dad, like how does it affect being a dad. Yeah. Like your schedule and getting called uh, out and stuff. Well, like, so luckily my unit, we don't 
we're not like a mobilizing unit. Uh-huh. So like our mission is state focused. Okay. So we are the medical detachment of the Utah National Guard. And so what we do is we essentially make sure that all the soldiers from the uh, Army Guard in Utah are uh-huh. medically ready. So if they were to be deployed, that they would be able to be in that situation that they don't have to like go through all the medical process. Um, so like as a medic, that's what I do for them. That's cool. So I help them, which is kind of cool because a lot of the other units in the Guard, like they're like more like combat focused. Uh-huh. So like those guys don't get to actually do their mission unless they go down range. Uh-huh. Um, versus us, since we're a state oriented mission, I'm constantly doing my mission, which is kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like we do cool things like this year, I'm going to go to Morocco, uh-huh. in Africa. So we do like a humanitarian kind of aid mission. So we'll go there for two weeks for our two week drill. Okay. And we'll just essentially help them in the Moroccan military provide like medical aid to their uh, populace. Uh huh. So like we do like anything like dental work, like a lot of them get a lot of dental work. We do like minor surgery stuff, Damn. Uh, a lot of vaccines and like a lot of like health education Yeah. and just essentially just whatever they really need. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. And yeah. Plus you get to go to different countries and yeah, you know, like help and have that like good feeling of community helping out. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like the biggest reason why I decided to do it at all. Uh huh. Like I don't like consider myself like, hugely patriotic but i did feel like i do have a due diligence to my community yeah and what better way to serve than that way yeah and of course like you know we get benefits from it you know so like i've never used anything for like education Uh but the cool thing and like and i was thinking more family when i joined because i was like if i do active duty like constantly will have to move my family and i didn't want that so i was like well I can still serve here and be home next to my family. Yeah. But like my, any of my education benefits, I can like grandfather to my kids. You could pass that on. Yep. So oh, that's what I'm that. planning on doing. Cause I don't plan on going to college anytime <laughs> soon, but, uh, I it's mean, a waste of time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like it would be nice to like have like an associates or a bachelor's. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so that's what I do that, that way. Um, and then this is a police officer, just like what you'd expect, you know, like I do that. Um, that's like my full-time job, like my primary income. Uh And then, uh, just like whenever like a call comes out for a fire or like anything like fire related, then I'll go. Yeah. But like you said, like it's, it's tough juggling everything and like any shout out, whatever is my wife. Yeah. Because there's been times, you know, like I'll get home from, you know, from drill or from like my normal work schedule. And the pager will go off because that's how we respond to a call. Uh huh. And I'll be like, "Hey, sorry, I got to go. It's a structure fire." Uh huh. Like, that's just how it is, you know. And like, I grew up with that. Like, that's a huge reason why I became a firefighter is because my dad, um, which is like the coolest thing ever. Uh huh. Because, like, for a while he was my actual captain. That's so cool. we would drive to fires. It's actually one of them is actually on my TikTok. You, you can look it up. Oh yeah, we'll have and to check so, it out. Uh, like we we get to fight fires together. Uh-huh. Like talk about a cooler thing, fighting like fires a, with your dad, a dad and a son. And a lot of that is like in our department. There's a lot of dad and son duos, or like grandfathers and grandsons. Like it's it's all over. Yeah. And so like that's one of the cool things that I get to do with my son Brooks right now because he's you know able to like understand like and I'll be able to do that with Britain and Briggs, but like I can just like legit take him. And go do stuff like that because, like, I live right down the down the road from the fire station. Yeah. So, like, I'm always driving mm-hmm. because, like, I'm right there next to the station. Like, I'll go, I'll just go pick up the ladder. You yeah. Know? It's the, I like driving the ladder. Everyone doesn't like it because it's so long. That's huge. That's yeah. a huge truck. But like, it's kind of cool. Like this last year, talk about being involved in your kids' lives. So, like, obviously, I'm a police officer and a firefighter. So, whenever anyone's like, hey bring the police car down or bring the fire truck and do a little, you know, thing for the kids. So I got to do that for Brooks this year. That's so cool. And so the thing that's like kind of funny and cool about this is Brooks is like, eh, my dad's a firefighter. It's, (laughs) it's cool. And like, he knows like where the majority of stuff is at. Yeah. And so he's like, it's just a fire truck, but all the other kids are like, dude, this is so cool. Brooks like, yeah, but like, I've been on fire truck rides with my dad all the time. Uh huh. And so like sometimes I'll just like, we'll go up to the station. Like I'll have to like wash my turnouts. And every time we go there, he's like, dad, can I get in a fire truck? I'm like, yeah, of course you can get in a fire truck, dude. That's cool. And like, he knows how to like turn on the lights, you know, and it, it's really cool. So like, I hope 
at some point, like if he wanted to do that, he could. Yeah. But yeah, dude, it's it's rough. Sometimes like I'm constantly gone and the other like other times like now, like I actually have time. Yeah. I actually have time to be home and and like taking care of kids, like I wanna do the best I can, but like praise to my wife too. Like yeah. she does a lot of lot of the heavy lifting on that aspect of things. Yeah. Like you don't realize how hard it is to take care of a child, much less like three of them. Yeah. Like know? lately I've been playing house husband. Yeah. <laughs> and so like <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know how you guys do this. Yeah, for like, real. I'm like going nuts. And I mean, I obviously contributed to that because like that kid is every much mine as it is hers. Uh huh. You know, and so like when everyone asks me like, how do you do it all? I'm like, well, I don't do it all at the same time. Like, yeah. Everything has a time and a place. But the only way I can do anything is with my wife. Yeah. My wife, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. Same here. Like, I'm sure you probably have it. It was like, hey, like, where did I where's this? And she's like, Oh, it's right here. And you're like, Oh, I didn't know. They got shit. But like my wife's really good at like planning and she's really, really good at like supporting me Mm -hmm. because for a while she was the one that was the primary income in my family. Yeah. And so she was the one that pushed me to do bigger and better things. And just having like a involved spouse in your, in your life that like wants to push you to do better is what I looked for. And that's why I was like, this is the one I want that one to raise my kids Mm -hmm. because I know I can't do it really well, but I think she could do pretty good. Yeah. So that's how I balance things. It's probably not like the best answer, but it's, it's the answer. It's the only answer. Yeah. Because when a call comes out, my wife takes care of the kids. Yeah. And then when she has to go to work, I take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just a balancing act. I feel like that's huge to kind of work out with your spouse too, you know, like, okay, like, like we've talked about like scheduling kind of, and like doing it on the fly like that, I'm sure it's kind of crazy. It is. And I mean, but talk about like your, like you said, like it, you know, it takes a community Mm -hmm. because there's been times where we've had uh, like bigger fires and I mean, we're all volunteer. Yeah. Like you don't get paid to do it. No, like only like a select few do because it's like, they have to be because they're city employees, like our chief. Uh Um, but like, I don't get paid to go do that, but I do it because it's, I have a strong relationship with our community Yeah. because I always grew up like looking at people in our community and I always wanted to be able to be that person to like give back. Yeah. And so for me, that was one of the big reasons. And I just, I love helping people. That's cool. So, but there'd be times where we'd have these bigger fires and my wife would be at work and either my mom or my mother-in-law or my, my dad, I mean, not really my dad, but like, cause he would be going to the fires with me, but uh-huh. he'd sometimes be he'd be like, Hey, like, like just go to this, you know, but I would have like, Hey, I need somebody to come watch the boys while I go to this fire. And like, they all understand. Yeah. They know like, Hey, this is what we knew he was going to do from early on. So like, we're okay to come and help. Yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. It's so, awesome. They're, yeah. they're able to come help. Yeah. But how is it like being able to show like, not show, but share that part of your life with your son. So, I mean, like, obviously they're still pretty young, so they don't really understand mm-hmm. a whole lot, but just already, um, like I, like Brooks, he has such an imagination. It's awesome. That's cool. Like he says some, like you said, some of the most off the wall stuff, <laughs> but at the same time, like it's kind of cool. Cause like, you'll like ask, Hey Brooks, like, what do you want to be when you're older? Uh-huh. And he's like, I want to be a firefighter a police officer and so my brother Braxton he flies Apaches for the the army he's like I'm gonna be an Apache pilot and then I'm also gonna be a doctor and I'm like oh why would you want to do that and he's like dad because I want to be like you and like that just like hits you right in the heart you know god because there was there was a point in time where uh I can't remember what, what I think we just came back from the station from the fire station and Brooks said dad when I get big, you and I, we're going to fight fires together. That's so cool. And he's like, and he calls my dad, Papa. He's like, and Papa, he's going to help fight fires too. And we're all going to go fight, uh, fight fires together. And we're going to go help people. God. And I'm like, way to go, boy. You're doing something That's right. Awesome. That's so cool. Like, it's so cool to like see your kids, like, like look up to you. Yeah. That's all I want. Like in yeah. life. Like, that's what I've been working so hard for. So that's freaking cool. Like Talk about coming, going to the, the gym, you know, like. I, I joke around with Brooks because I'm like, dude, I need you to eat your food. Uh huh. I'm like, daddy doesn't have muscles unless he eats his food. Uh huh. And so like, 
he says his, and, and you know, you'll get this when Ezra gets a little older. You're like, you have to make up things. Yeah. Right. So like I tell Brooks, I'm like, hey, if you eat all your food, you're going to get magic powers. <laughs> and so he believes it. Yeah. You know, but it's like, it's out of fun. Yeah. You know, that's cool. But like Brooks sometimes will be like, dad, fill my muscles. I'm like, okay. See, it's because I ate my food and I'm big and strong like you. That's so cool. All right, bud. Yeah. I like it. That's so cool. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun, man. I mean, watching kids grow is, is so cool. Yeah. And, I, I mean, everyone's always asked me, like, hey, you do so many things. Like, what if you had to do one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? No. Yeah. And, like, like, the real answer, I, I, I love being a dad. Uh-huh. It's, like, the best thing in the world. Um. And of course, you know, everyone like, like, which one do you like better, being a firefighter or a police officer? Uh huh. I'm like, well, last time I checked, if someone like goes to jail and it's like a husband and a wife and you're taking the person to jail, like they're, they always hate you. Yeah. They're like, can't believe you're doing this. I'm like, dude, you're the one that was, you know, like, <laughs> you're the one doing some illegal shit yeah. over here. <laughs> like, but like as a firefighter, like some people's houses will burn down. Yeah. And they'll, they'll come up to you and they're like, hey, like, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for doing all that you could. Uh-huh. Like, being a firefighter is the coolest thing ever. That's freaking cool. Like, I've been in fires where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Oh, my gosh. Because it's just blacked out. How's breathing all that smoke in? Do you ever get some of that? <sighs> I mean, the majority of the time I have my mask on, uh-huh. you know, so that doesn't happen. But, like, wildfires, uh, we had a pretty good one this last year up on Skyline. Uh-huh. And so I was in there. I was like the one of the first trucks in, and we had their. Have you seen our Humvee? I haven't. So we have an old army Humvee that they That's put cool. into a brush truck, and that thing, of course, you know, those climbs. Uh huh. And so we were in there, and like the windows were up, but like smoke was getting in. Uh huh. It sucks. I bet it sucks. I bet I can't even imagine. But yeah, no, like there's no better adrenaline rush that I've ever had than being in like a good fire. Damn. That's so cool. Like, and, and it's cool. Like, you get to break stuff. Yeah. Like, I break, like, you forcibly, you know, forcible entry, like, opening doors. Dude, it's so fun. I have to kick a door down and get get inside the building and everything. Yeah. Get people out. And, I mean, like, you, you can't tell me otherwise, but a fire truck's way cooler than a police car. Yeah, I think so. Like that's Especially those ladder cool. trucks. Yeah. Those things look sick. Dude, they're, they're so sick. So. And all the kids love them, you know? Yeah. Whenever a kid waves you down, you like you can't not turn on the lights uh-huh. or honk on the horn. So like, I do that all the time. That's cool. Cause like that's where I learned it from. You know, it like, bring out the little kid in you, like honking the horn and everything. Yeah, dude. There's nothing like driving down, uh, like Main Street, and going code. Mm-hmm. Like uh, that big call we had this last year with the semi. Yeah. I was the first apparatus on scene. Oh my gosh. But like at the dealership. Yep. That's cool. I was at the gym. Oh and my so, like, gosh! I hurry and got uh, from the gym over to the station, and then I, it was really confusing because I was like, "We're we're getting paged for a semi on fire, but the address they gave us was 400 North of Maine." And so I was like, "There's only a car here, or two cars that were involved in an accident." And so I kept looking down. You could see what we call a header, uh-huh. so you can see all the smoke. I'm like, "Oh, I'm just gonna keep going there." So like, I was driving in oncoming traffic. All the way down because traffic was just so bad. Yeah. But, like, that's one of the coolest things, too. Oh, my gosh. That's pretty sick. Yeah. It, it's fun. Is it cool kind of seeing, like, the damage and stuff and, like, getting to be the first one there? I more or less was, like, really confused the entire time because yeah. I didn't understand, like, what happened until after the fact. Uh-huh. Because up to that point, like, there were so many accidents. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, yeah. I don't understand. And then come to find out it was because of that but like it was out of a movie it was straight chaos God. i've never been involved in that big of a call like there was 13 other agencies beside us that helped respond oh my gosh well i just remember seeing that on the news and like seeing all the like snapchats and stuff of it and yeah it was, it was i had just barely past that part of main street actually i got home and then five minutes later i saw it all go down and i was like thank <laughs> god i wasn't there yeah like you it's see the crazy. one of the dude that was walking in the crosswalk yeah <laughs> yeah that's crazy so i mean like i i think i've told you but like if you really if you would want to do it you can get on yeah i, I actually would like to but there, i mean we have uh like you always can put an application in so if anyone's listening and they want to be a firefighter like we'll put you through school mm-hmm. so like i have my firefighting certifications too that's so cool. like 
you have to do obviously like a probationary phase and then you have to go through fire school. Um, and that's, that's kind of like on your own time, like you're not getting paid for it, but like you're getting, you're getting a free certification out of it. Yeah. Which can, you know, we had a lot of guys like they go to Dugway or the army depot or they'll even go out to like bigger agencies like Orem or Pleasant Grove. Yeah. So like it's, it's attainable. Go do it professionally. Yeah. That's cool. Is there a lot of like openings for it professionally, like in the Salt Lake area? Right now there is anything public service related right now is like at a super all time low just cause like the um, negativity. Yeah. The know? climate. Like I know you and I were talking about being a police officer for a while and like we just, we need them. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be a job for them. Um, I love being a police officer too. You know, it, it's been really eye opening. Yeah. A lot of it, like, like you said, like just being a dad. Mm-hmm. Cause I've been involved in calls where, you know, there's, kids that are involved no, luckily nothing that's been like really shook in me yeah i mean like it was so stupid like this little kid had like ran away from his house on accident like, uh-huh. it was a, a, like at a party and he was wandering around the streets and so someone called it in and so we show up and we were like this kid at the time was like the same age as my kid oh my god and looked gosh. just like him and i'm like this isn't even a traumatic call but like it already is like hurting me as a dad and as hitting a parent. you deep and so i mean luckily we found his family but like if he would have kept walking another 200 yards, he would have been on one of the busiest streets we have. Oh, my gosh. And so, like, just that. And I know I'm going to have to have one of those calls where I'm going to have to go home. And I'm going to have to cry. And I'm going to have to just go hold my kids. Uh-huh. Because my dad's been on those plenty of times. Yeah. My dad will come home. And next thing you know, he's, like, giving me a big old hug. And I'm like, I don't know why, but I know it's because of the job. Yeah. That's So cool. it makes it tough. That's really tough. And, like. When I was thinking of maybe being a police officer, that's what kind of scared me the most is like responding yeah. to calls like that or like the domestic violence calls and stuff like that and yeah. having to kind of live with that. And so like I applaud anybody who does that profession because like, a lot of people can't do it. Dude, it's – it's uh, for a while there I thought I couldn't do it Yeah. because there's just so much you have to know. And, I mean, for me it's like I don't want to, you know, take that baggage home, which yeah. I've been lucky enough that I – have a really good support group and support system, whether it's people at work or my, my family. Uh-huh. Um, but it's hard not to like jade you. Yeah. You know, that's what we call it. Like when you're being jaded. Uh huh. Um, and it like, it has changed me Yeah. for some things, some good, some things worse, you know, um, like I've been involved in some critical incidents before. And, you know, during that entire time, like I was thinking like if I was to die, like, did I do enough? Yeah. Did I leave enough of a legacy behind that my, my kids are going to be okay? Or is my wife going to be okay? Is Dang. my, my, my boys going to know who their dad was Yeah. or who he, you know, hopefully raised them to be. Uh-huh. So like, it, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. But at the same time, it's taught me enough to like want to be better yeah. for my kids. Like you said, mm-hmm. so it's it's fun you know at the end of the day like the majority of our 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 calls and job is is rarely it's really tight-knit like my crew is awesome like they're really good guys and girls and like we always are there for each other no matter what and so like like my own sergeant she she had twins of her own and she reached out and you know she's provided us a lot of like clothes that i'm like Dude, like this is awesome. Yeah. And it's just like that, like you said, that community. Well, and I think that helps a lot because like you've helped a lot and like helped with clothes and diapers and stuff like that. I get and, it, dude. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> get it. it's tough being a new dad, but like having someone there to like kind of help you through it and like, yeah. it helps a lot. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, like fa- uh, family's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like family has their place, but friends also have a place too. Mm-hmm. And like, that's why like, I like look at you and, uh, like look at some of our other friends like that are close enough that I would consider family uh-huh. that I'm like, if my own family can't help me with something, I could be like, Hey, I need this. And you guys be like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Like I'll be there in five minutes. Dude. Yeah. 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 And I feel like you always need that. Those friends or, you know, that, those close people that you could always call at midnight and be like, Hey, I need some help. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. I'm moving a dresser and I need help moving a dresser or uh, something. Yeah. Cause you know, wives can't always help with that. Yeah. So before I forget, just because I don't know how long you want to keep going. Uh-huh. So I was telling you earlier, there's a, if any of you guys watch Act of Valor, it's a, it's a kind of a fiction show or a movie, mm-hmm. but like they took actual real Navy SEALs and made the movie. So like 
obviously any of us guys like anything with guns. Oh yeah. And anything with explosions. Uh huh. And of course, like a good storyline. Uh huh. And of course, the the plot of the story, you know, like the guy ends up dying in the end, which of course sucks, you know. But like he had a son. Yeah. And this is what he re- read his son, and I was like, hey. I'm going on a podcast talking about dads. Like, I got to bring this up. Let's check it out. What is it? So, uh, the actual guy that came up with this, I don't know if you call it a poem or whatever, but his it's uh, Chief Tecumseh. Uh-huh. He's a like, Native American chief and a warrior that, uh, like, when, of course, the U.S. was spreading west, he was trying to, you know, stop that. But uh, one of the things that he said that I really liked, uh, it's called, like, Live Your Life. It says, so live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one about their religion, respect others in, the view, in their view, and demand that they respect yours. Love your life, perfect your life, beautiful, uh, beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose in the service of your people. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over the great divide. Always give a word or a sign or um, of salute when meeting a, or passing a friend, even a stranger when in a lonely place. Show respect to all people and grovel to none. When you rise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. Abuse no one and no thing, for abuse turns the wise ones to fools and robs the spirit of its vision. When it comes to you, uh, when it comes to your time to die, be not like those whose hearts are filled with the fear of death, so that when their time comes, they weep and pray for a little more time to live their lives over again in a different way. Sing your death song and die like a hero going home. So I kind of butchered a little bit, but I really, really like that. Um, Because, like, I would hope my my boys can see that that's kind of how I live. Yeah. Um, Because, like, it's an inevitable thing. Yeah. You you never know. Today could be the last day. It's the only thing in life that's promised. Exactly. You know, it's kind of poetic. It's one of those things. It's like, you know, he's like, don't fear death. Yeah. Don't fear anything. Yeah. Give it your all. Be of service to your people, and that's. I mean, I think you and I know that pretty well from our dads. Yeah. Like, there were so many times that I would go mow someone's lawn, not even getting paid for it. Yeah. Just help. Or just shoveling someone's walk. Uh Uh-huh. That's what I always live by is hard work. Yeah. And it just shows, like, I think I turned out pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) You know, for the most part. You know. So I'm just going to keep that going with my boys. That's awesome. And, like, I like how it says, uh, like, don't beg for a little more life so you could relive it a different way. Like, I think like showing your kids is like, live your life. Like, you know, don't have any regrets. Don't wish you did something different. If you want to go do something, go do it. And like, I don't know. I, I try and live by that. Like if I died tomorrow, I'd, I'd live my life how I wanted it. So, yeah, you know, I always talk to those people and they're like, Oh, if I was on my deathbed, I wish I would have had this or done this or called so-and-so. And it's like, just do it. Yeah. So I think showing that to your kids is huge. 100%. You know, but thanks for coming on the pod. I yeah, really man. appreciate it. Yeah. We'll have to have you back. Yeah, we will. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Till well, next time. Till next time. See you guys.